Hello and welcome to another RPG Architect tutorial. Today is a Patreon request from Cybernetic Possum who wanted to see how to do a fetch quest in RPGA. So with that said, let's get started. All right, so here we are in the 2D sample project and the scene setup right now is that the player is gonna go talk to this NPC who's gonna give them a quest. And then this item is going to represent all of the items being picked up. You could scatter them around and only make them worth one, but just for the sake of this tutorial, this is going to be worth the amount that is needed and then it's going to activate this NPC to then give you a reward. So let's start with how, how to go about this. The first thing you're gonna need is you're gonna need some common variables. And so we went up to this one right here and I created a gray vial quest and then a gray vial count. So the quest is going to be the actual status of the quest. And I like to use a variable for a quest because the quest line could be as long as you want with a variable. It's just a switch you can only have it on or off and so that doesn't really help and say you want you know a, a part a b c d of of this quest then you could with a variable so it starts with a value of zero that means that it's off so a value of one is going to mean that it's active and then a value of two is going to mean that it's complete so then any logic that would need to follow this quest would react based off one or two and i'll show you what i mean by that in a in a second here the vial count is going to be the actual vials that you're collecting, all right? So right now it's zero, but as you collect vials, you would get more and more. So here we go. We just need to create a NPC first, and it needs three pages, all right? So it needs the, and remember, the top uh, script page is going to be the one that's trying to run. So that one needs a condition, and so this is going to be if the gray vial quest is greater than one. So that means it's it's two or more. Then we have another page here, quest active, and that's if it's equal to one. And then we have a no quest, and this is no condition. This is the original starting point. So I added a sprite model, which was just super easy right here. And then when the player uh, interacts with an action button, then we're just going to have a static message. You look like you can help me out. And then find me three vials. Oh, I guess it was only three. I, um, three vials, don't ask me why. And then what we're going to do is we're going to change the quest to equal one. And that is going to jump us into this page. And so this condition is going to be looking for the vial count. As soon as you press an action button on the, uh, on the NPC, it's going to be looking for the vial count. And if it's greater than or equal to three, and the greater than is just in case you get more than three, then it's going to display the message of, wow, you, you actually did it. And then it's going to uh, change the quest to two. And then also right here, you would probably want to minus the three vials as well. But uh, for this sake, it is just, you know, getting a completion. So once it changes to two, it then goes to complete. However, if you don't have that many vials, then it's just going to show another message saying you have found uh, this many vials. And you can see that I, I, I put a, I see you have, and then here is a nice text tag to use, and that will show the amount of vials that you have. All right, so that way the player could understand how many, how many they have. But if it is true, and this turns to two, well, then it's complete, and it says you have found them. And so that's, that's really all that we need to do. Then you would have the items in these entities right here, and this would be, this is where um, you would kind of, it might need to be a little different setup right now. And the reason why is because local data, local switches and variables, they don't persist right now. We talked about that in a previous video, but it would be nice if we had a persist option right here. And right now, this picked up switch, it turns on when you pick it up, but then when you leave the scene and come back, it's going to be, it's, it's going to be off again. And so the item is going to appear again, basically. So ideally, if, if there is no persistent change eventually, then you would want to set this up where each item would have to have its own global switch. And that's if you're just doing it this way. There, um, but yeah, so anyway, I created a, a local switch called Picked Up. And you can see that the first page that is going to run is this active one. And when you press an action on it, then it's going to plus three. Now this is where I was saying I just give the whole value just off one. You would want to split this up and then 
just put one. So this would each one would be just worth one. And then we're going to turn the local switch on, which is the picked up one, which goes to gone. And it just basically has nothing, no sprite model. It basically just loses its sprite model. And so with all these changes, when you play test the game, you can go down, you can talk to the NPC. It says, you look like you can help me out. Find me three gray, or three gray vials, don't ask me why. And then if you talk to her again, or whatever this thing is, I'm not sure. Um, you ha have you found the gray vials yet? I'll give you a hint, they are gray. I see you have zero so far. And so if you pick them up one at one and kept going back to her, it would, sh it would update that, that uh, variable count. But now I've picked up the gray vials and now, wow, you actually pulled that off. Great work. And then it leads to her second page or her last standing page, I guess, which is you only found them because they were right in front of you. I just didn't want to bend down and pick them up. So anyway, you can see this is just how you can do a simple fetch, fetch quest. Those gray vials could have been anywhere. They could have been hidden. The only thing that you would want to consider, though, is that if you don't want them to appear again, as of right now, um, you need to you would need to create a, a, a global switch that would persist when you pick it up. And so, yeah. Anyways, if you have any questions, comments below, Steam Forums, Discord will get you figured out. And with that said, I'll see you at the next video.